Welcome ladies and gentlemen to another tech review on my YouTube channel. Today we are looking at the Zephyrus G14 from Asus. So if you missed the last video where I unboxed it, you can find it up here or in the description below or under my channel in the video tab. In this video, we are looking at different RAM setups for this notebook and look at different results for performance benchmark. I need to mention in the first place that I didn't run any game benchmark because this laptop is meant to be used as a hardcore Chrome browsing machine due to the bad performance of Facebook Ads Manager and not as a gaming render machine. But I'm curious, what is your laptop? What's your daily driver? Tell me in the comments below. In the initial setup, the G14 came with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM on a base clock of 3200 megahertz. I run different benchmarks which were CPU and GPU related to get as realistic real life results as possible. This included some synthetic benchmarks like TimeSpy to see if different RAM variations are giving different results. The additional RAM I used were two Kingston HyperX Impact 3200 megahertz sodium sticks with 16 and 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. In my results, most of the benchmark didn't have any significant difference between those setups. But let's jump right into the results. First, we are starting with Cinebench R23 single core results. The difference here are less than 1.5%, so no significant relevance in my opinion. The same goes on for multi-core results. As you can see here, the 40 gigabyte RAM version has even a lower score. The next was Cinebench R20 with single core results and again the base model wins here but has no significant relevance. It continues even more with the multi-core results where the best and the worst results are only 3 points away. The next benchmark used was Valley on Extreme HD settings where the results have been quite the same again. Winning here is also the base model but not with a real significant lead. The next benchmark has been some Pi calculation applications, SuperPi and HyperPi, where the higher RAM models got the lead, but again with no significant advantage. HyperPi even showed that the 24 GB version was the winner, followed by the base version of 16 GB, and on the last position we got the 40 GB version. Now the real interesting benchmark have been Budget Systems Adobe Premiere Pro benchmark. Here wins the base model, followed by the 24 GB model and the 40 GB version on last position. We can see that even increasing the RAM to the max or beyond the manufacturer's maximum didn't have any great performance benefits in this particular benchmark project. This benchmark has been followed up by a TimeSpy benchmark where again no real difference was evident. Then I performed some additional browser benchmarks where again no significant score was achieved. For benchmarking purposes I used PSPDF Kit WASM, Kraken, JavaScript benchmark benchmark speedometer 2.0 and stylebench which runs on the same speedometer framework. So what's the conclusion of all those benchmarks? As you can see there is no real basic improvement to have more RAMs installed in this machine looking from a browsing perspective. Perspective. What has not been tested is if we would run a real big project in Premiere where we would need more than 16 or 24 gigabytes of RAM. Currently, I can't speak from a gaming perspective either, but I don't think it would make a huge significant difference. So to wrap this up guys, maxing out RAM on this model will not give you that massive performance boost as you may expect. Especially not on a workstation laptop when you use it just for browsing and small Adobe project. If you have to do a lot of computational work where a lot of memory is required or have RAM demanding application, the first 16 gigabyte allocation will be fast and the rest will sit there with the speed of a single channel stick. So to wrap it up, 16 gigabyte to dual channel RAM speed will be achieved on every model. The additional rest of the bigger RAM stick will be in single channel RAM speed. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave a comment on what you want to see next. Until then, good data.